This is Richard Perrett. He has a special set of skills. After 20 years in the military, he taught himself watchmaking. From chaotic war zones to the calm of his workshop, this is Richard's story. Richard grew up in a military family. His father served in the RAF. As a young boy, Richard was fascinated by the armed forces. I was always attracted um, by the military. I think originally I wanted to be a pilot, uh, but, you know, my eyes aren't good. In fact, I get double vision. The army seemed like the sensible alternative. I went to the Army Sixth Form College at uh, Welbeck in Nottinghamshire. Then we're fed into Santa's, so I was at Santa's at 18. Um, this is my platoon on a particularly misty morning at Sandhurst, and this is me right here. After Sandhurst, Richard went into the Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineers, where he attained the rank of platoon commander. He began travelling the world. Of all of the officers in my intake, if there was one officer that was jumpy, it was me. During the early years of active service, Richard met his wife, Helen. Say all the right things. Yeah, this is us um, uh, on the night we got engaged at the officer's mess. It was a summer ball, wasn't it? It was the summer ball in 1989. Tan strap, actually, you know what? It's Helen needed some time to adjust. Richard being in the army was a completely different type of life to what I'd been used to. Um, and I think it's quite hard for a lot, of, a lot of people because you don't have the decisions to make for yourself about what you want to do, where you want to go, where you want to live. It's all done for you. After a few months of marriage, Richard was called into active war zones. The most formative part of, of being in the military is when you go on, on operations. And, and I commanded a thing called the Reclamation Platoon in the First Gulf War. It was quite difficult because when we got married, less, less than a month later, Richard went off to the Gulf War. So I was kind of um, not knowing whether I'd ever see, <laughs> see my husband again. But I think, you know, it kind of makes or breaks you. Richard operated all over the world, from Norway to Bosnia. This period took a toll on his mental health. There are two types of guy in the army, and there are pretty much two types of guy anywhere. And you get the guys that are cool, uh, naturally cool, and I was not that guy. He left the army after 20 years, having earned the rank of major. Although leaving the army, I don't think, was easy for him because he'd kind of lost that security. Whilst adjusting to civilian life, Richard found a new job in computing. I was working in advanced computer systems. I was a specialist, I guess, in computer security and uh, was working on that um, for first the military and then for pharmaceuticals. When visiting an old military friend who lived in Wales, Richard decided that it might be a nice place to live. At this point, Richard and his family were living in a small holding in Larne. However, they weren't able to maintain this due to a change in circumstances. I was made redundant and I had to take that decision. Uh, do I want to go back and get another contract? And I was offered one. Um, or do I want to sell up and get my time back? In 2014, feeling that he needed a change, Richard discovered his passion, watchmaking. I think I saw a film of 
it's probably on YouTube, of the back of an old pocket watch. Now, uh, you, you know, I looked into the back of this thing and there were, you know, cogs and, uh, and at the time it was pretty meaningless to me. But, well actually, actually I had two thoughts. One of them was, you know, this is simple. And I also saw it something that was quite meditative. With his daughter Jenny as his apprentice, they now share the workload. I started back in May this year, so I've not been doing it very long at all. And because I have three young children, I was working a really busy full-time job and it just didn't work. Whereas with Dad, I work a couple of days a week and doing the watchmaking and it's just, it fits my lifestyle. Yeah. They service watches, some valued at up to £40,000. Richard also has his own watch brand. Dad's watches are the major watches, which obviously links in with Dad's past as in the army, and he was a major. While out on a run in Pembroke Dock, Richard noticed a building, the local barracks. He hopes that one day he can make it his manufacturing base. When you're running on your own with, with Ozzy the dog, you tend to dream a little bit. And one of my dreams is to change this for into my manufacture. I'd need quite a lot of cash for that. So yeah, that's my little dream. This could become a family business, as his grandson has also shown interest. Rupert is my eldest son, and he knows that when he's nine that he can start making his first watch. We've got a watch-making kit, which is particularly for children. He's been told as soon as he's nine, bless him, that he can make a watch. And I think, you know, that's, it's, it's while we've got Dad here with all the knowledge, let's pass that down. Uh, it'll settle down. When you put it on first, you something... I think I will be watch-making till I am dragged out of my workshop in a box. Not only does Richard make his own watches that sell for up to a thousand pounds, he also has customers that travel from far and wide for repairs. Brett Wallace has made the journey from Southampton to collect his watch. Hey, Brett, good to see you. Great to see you. Welcome to Ginger's. <laughs> Thank you very there much. There we are. This is the moment hey, I've been waiting for. Voila. Wow. Wow. Hey. Can I look at it? Uh, it's your watch. There we go. Wow. And it's ticking. <laughs> and it's really, really shiny. Yeah. How did you do that? Looks so, brand new. Yeah, um, a lot of work. I had to take the whole watch apart put a new mainspring in it, and then clean everything, put it all back together, and uh, regulate it, and then polish it. And uh, that is the result, yeah. Wow, well, so... I really appreciate your hard work. Watchmaking has done wonders for Richard and his mental health. Watchmaking does contribute to the way he is now, a lot calmer. Whatever pressure Richard has got is up to him, really. Life is much better for him now because he's doing what he wants to do. He works when he wants to work, and obviously he's still got to work very, very hard. I wanted train myself in that the sort of post operational phase of my life to become the cool person that I probably wasn't. I feel focused, I feel calm and I also feel in a way 
like the master of my own little universe. I'm in control of what's going on here. 